Welcome, dear listeners. It's good to have you along. If you're a new listener, we direct you further to our website, RedEyesCreations.com, where you can read more about us, get more radio, TV, and news on many of the topics we find interesting. Mitch Schultz is the producer and director of the film The Spirit Molecule, based on the work of Rick Strassman, who we had with us recently. Mitch has previously worked with ghost robots, synthetic pictures, and others. He has a Bachelor of Science in Radio, Television, Film from the University of Texas at Austin, and a Master of Professional Studies from Tisch School of the Arts, Maurice Canbar Institute of Film, Television, and New Media at New York University. I urge everyone who hasn't already listened to our interview with Rick Strassman to do so by going to our radio archive, so that you can catch up on some of the background and science related to the subject of DMT, dimethyltryptamine. That we will be talking about today with Mitch related to the release of the film *The Spirit Molecule*. Stay with us for the next hour as we discuss the work behind the film and some of Mitch's own experiences related to DMT. It is excellent to have you here, Mitch Schultz. Uh, we're really looking forward to talking with you about uh, the film *The Spirit Molecule*. Obviously, that is uh, upcoming here in October. Uh, why don't we begin to talk a little bit about you and your background and when you? Got uh, a hold, I guess, of of some of Rick's work, or, or when you got uh, when you got familiarized yourself with it. Uh, when did you hear about Rick Strassman, and 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 why did you want to get involved in in this kind of project, uh, Mitch? Well, a little bit of a backstory. Um, grew up in Texas, but uh, wanted to get out and experience the rest of the world, and ended up in New York, um, going to grad school. And <clears throat> prior to my last year of starting, my last year of grad school, it was the summer of two thousand and two. I had a really good friend that was moving back to Brazil, and we all decided to kind of get together for a little uh, going away party. And a friend that joined us that evening um, had brought some DMT. And no one at that time, um, except for the gentleman that brought it, had heard of it. So he wanted to uh, to share the experience with us. Uh, we did that evening, and from that moment on, my life had changed. And it was just as simple as the experience of being 10 minutes. And as, as soon as I came back, I, I knew... I would say almost instantaneously that I wanted to make a film on DMT, and I was surprised that there wasn't much information out there. So I, I just started my my research process, and you know that process was roughly four years, and just trying to get my hands on as much as I could, and, and very quickly came across uh, Dr. Strassman's book and research. And once I <clears throat> once I dove into his book, I knew pretty quickly that this would probably be the way to tell the story of DMT. Um, you know, obviously it is a psychedelic, but being able to kind of put it into a framework of science um, would make it a little more digestible for <clears throat> for the masses. So that's how I kind of came across it and got interested in it. Uh, is there anything you'd like to share with us in terms of your own experience? Uh, is is that something you you want to do? Sure, absolutely. Um, well, let me let's see if I can. Pull back again. Um, also, living in New York and living a uh, very fast lifestyle, and kind of feeling in some ways, you know, like I had a pretty good understanding of what reality is and was. And you know, living within my my own ego, I you know thought I had a pretty good understanding of that. So that being kind of set up, the I was the third person that evening to try the experience or to to uh, ingest the DMT and. I had watched two people before me go, and not much seemed to happen at all. They um, they did their inhalations, and then they laid back, closed their eyes, and that was about the extent of it. So as it was coming to me, I, I wasn't thinking much about it. I didn't really, know, I didn't have any idea about what to expect. But uh, after the second inhalation, uh, things started to shift and change pretty dramatically um, in and around the room. I started to lose any kind of normal reference, except for just kind of shapes of people and objects in the room, everything within those shapes uh, seemed like it was almost an atomic level, mm -hmm. um, very quick, fast changing patterns. Um, and then the gentleman, the, the gentleman that was giving me the, the DMT said I needed to try to take one more, which was already going to be fairly difficult. Um, I was able to take that, that third hit and laid back, closed my eyes. And I, Really, on, on the initial front, because it happened so fast, it, it, I had the sense that I was dying. There was, a, there was a clear thought that kind of formed in my head mm -hmm. that, I, that I was dying. 
And that was a very difficult thing to grasp. Um, and, and everything's kind of happening so fast to try to wrap your head around that. And it was, it was frightening. It was, it was very frightening. But at that point, there's not a whole lot you can do except for, you know, let, let it happen. And you get over, overwhelmed by the experience. Um, after and my idea of time was <clears throat> was fragmented considerably, but uh, I would guess maybe a couple minutes max. I kind of had that fear and uneasiness, but immediately also felt like I was traveling down some sort of a tunnel or wormhole, something along those lines. And it's again, it's kind of hard to explain because you you have a sense of motion, concepts flying by. Um, again, still the patterns different um, languages almost that uh, mm -hmm. just information that some of it looked very familiar, but other times it looked completely alien and foreign after this kind of initial rush and things passing by um, ended up in a, in a space. And, and then, you know, what I could call just a very bright, brightly lit and multicolored landscape. Um, once I kind of popped there, that felt like it was the, the place where I could stop and actually kind of, sit and look around almost um, and you still have this awareness of, of your being and being able to kind of look and digest as best you can uh, what's going on around you. Now, again, it's completely foreign and odd, but as these geometric patterns are changing <clears throat> and morphing and colors, seeing a lot of information, I, um, I noticed on a very macro level a being um, and the best way I can describe, you know, what I perceived this being was a cat um, face or a cat woman almost, mm -hmm. and as soon as I recognized that on this on this very large scale, it shot forward and became like instantaneous right in front of my face. And again, as soon as I recognized it there, it shot back out, and it was this play back and forth uh, between the the micro and the macro is kind of what it felt like. Um, there was also a communication from this from this entity, and it was asking me to just sit back, try not to be overwhelmed, and essentially this is what reality is. And that's kind of the general general piece that I got. And then, mm -hmm. you know, in a very quick amount of time after I'm being confronted with this, I was back in the room with my friends. So this is, uh, it's interesting to me that you use that kind of terminology as well, that you kind of you mentioned that you go or when you come back in that sense. And obviously when we had the Rick with us, we talked about this idea also that, it seems to be a a, a portal, uh, you know, that that is potentially opening and, and and that you literally is going somewhere else. Not your body, obviously, but but your spirit, your soul, the, the essence that you are, is actually taken to another place. W would you would you say that that's true after having your experience as well? Is it are you leaving this planet, uh, so to speak, and, and actually taking <laughs> taken somewhere else? Um, I would, and I, and again, I speak from my own, my own experience. Um, I, I feel like I have had that experience that it is a portal to another dimension and, you know, it brings up the interesting question or, you know, cultures around the world have seen the dying process as somewhat of a tunnel or going down to, you know, a point of light that's at the end of this tunnel or similar descriptions of what death is and potentially could be like. And, and they seem to match up pretty well with the DMT experience. Um, and then again, of my own sense of in the experience of feeling like I was dying, it just kind of, you know, justifies to me or, you know, it makes sense to me then that that that, that could be the case, that this is opening up a portal to another dimension or a quantum level that we don't normally see. And uh, of course, as we talk with Rick again about is that everybody has this. Uh, within themselves, animals, plants, uh, <coughs> human beings as well. It's just about, uh, basically what we're talking about is just the amount of DMT uh, that you have in your body in that sense. Uh, but, w you know, w would you say that uh, the visual representation that, that you had here then is something that you try to replicate uh, in the film as well to kind of give a, a for those who haven't done it, uh, to, to give this, those people an idea of what, the, what the, this travel, this uh, portal that you're going through, how, how that would be? We're going to try. Um, it is an extremely difficult thing to put on a two-dimensional screen um, because it's not just the visual patterns and, you know, the entity context, so to speak, but there's a lot of emotional content built into it um, where you feel like you get a, a much deeper sense of, of reality. Um, everything seems to be completely intertwined and connected. And 
it's very again very difficult to show that but we were going to we we're going to try our best to to replicate that and to take people you know hopefully into that space a little bit and you know it's not just through the visual aspect but but also th- through the audio and being able to kind of have the synesthetic aspect of of those two being merged together there you go it's i mean what, what i've seen so far it's very very slick it's a nice production it's it's well well made and and uh, obviously we're working with some uh, People within uh, the the fields of, of uh, you know prior working with some of the professionals out there as well, of course, and and uh, I think uh, let's see if I can bring up his name here again. Uh, the director of photography you had on there, Matt uh, Elling, right? Yes, Matt Elling, uh-huh. uh huh. And uh, that that seems very nice. Are you shooting a lot of the the footage yourself, uh, you guys? Are you creating the three D visuals yourself, or or how do you go about doing that? Well, Matt has shot everything for us. Well, not everything. We have had a couple other. Um, additional camera people, and we have been doing all that work ourselves. The visual effects, the uh, the 3D work, compositing, and also kind of the CG work that we're using for a lot of our compositing were all done by, well, two of them are local artists here in Austin, and then another gentleman by the name of uh, Scott Draves, who was, the, who was the brains behind the Electric Sheep Project, uh, put together our CG animations that the other two gentlemen have composited with. And the Electric Sheep is a... It's a very interesting uh, program that this gentleman wrote, and it's kind of a throwback to the Philip K. Dick uh, with the electric sheep, <clears throat> do androids dream of electric sheep, but what he has done, this program can be installed on you know any PC or Macintosh, and all these computers are networked, and whenever they go to sleep, they communicate and they, they use their power to create these different animations. So it's kind of this collective consciousness, so to speak, building these images. And, and again, I think it's a great metaphor for, for DMT, and that's one of the reasons I really wanted to go with his work. But um, he created some just beautiful, beautiful animations for us that we, that we use uh, throughout the film. Really nice. That sounds, uh, sounds great. And, and the closest I've seen so far in terms of visual representation was, uh, I think it was another movie out in, that was back in 2004, I think. It was called, in the U.S., it was called Renegade, but it was a, based on a Belgian-French comic book called blueberry i think as well and they had a kind of a shamanic trip in there as well don't know if you you've seen uh, that Mitch, or if you recall that i have in fact i um the director young kuhn and i i looked at uh, his visuals for inspiration and um, he also had another film was a documentary about his shamanic kind of initiation um called other worlds and they also had some beautiful animations in there as well uh, when he had traveled down to peru and and drank with uh or drank ayahuasca with a uh, a shipibo down there in in uh, the Amazon. So I, I did look at both of his pieces of work and tried to get a sense of of how he was interpreting visions and his own stuff. But um, beautiful, beautiful stuff all the way around. Absolutely, and uh, you you had some you know a unique perspective, obviously here from from this point of view as well. You you've obviously done taken the this the the trip basically yourself in that sense here, and you've also worked with some of the volunteers, uh, the DMT volunteers that that reeked. Rick worked with uh, many years ago now in that sense. And what, is there anything you'd like to talk about or, or can relay to, to our listeners in terms of what they said and so forth as well? We talked specifically with Rick more about the scientific aspect and, and a little bit about some of the experiences that the, the, people, the people had. But it seems to be kind of, it seems to be very similar uh, across the board. Okay, some seems more negative and some seem uh, more positive, obviously. That's the biggest difference here. But uh, I guess the, one of the questions that, that that comes up here is: Do you think that everybody is visiting the the, the same the same place, if I can put it that way, or do you think that it, this is uh, it's all about personal interpretation and we actually go inside, so to speak, we go into our own psyche, 